Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Mr. Dean Kovald and today we are going to be going over the rules of significant figures. <clears throat> this is straightforward, um, but this is also something that students get really hung up on and um, it's the one thing, probably the second uh, second thing, uh, second most uh, important thing that uh, students get uh, get wrong next to like conversion factors. It's the hardest thing for them to remember uh, to do. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to go over the rules and I'm going to do some examples uh, to illustrate uh, each of the rules. Now, um, you might be used to seeing five rules here or you see that the Maybe the fourth rule is split up into A and B. I don't do that. Um, I make it more simplified and I'll explain in a, uh, towards the end why I do that. Um, and um, I'll, show, I'll show you uh, some examples. Okay, so, um, so the first rule is that all non-zero numbers are significant. So these rules are going to apply if I give you a, uh, a number or if you're given a number and you're asked how many sig figs are in this number. Um, if you're actually doing the measurement yourself, um, you're, you should be able to write down what the sig figs are from the measurement itself if, you're, if you've done the measurement or, or if, you're, uh, if you're given the measurement. Uh, in some way. Um, but if you're doing the measurement, you should already know how many sig figs. And I went over that uh, in a previous video where I talked about measurement and sig figs. So go back to that video if you want to know that. Um, but these rules are, are for applying to, like, if, if someone gives you uh, a measurement and they say, okay, how many sig figs do I have? Well, then you use the rules to figure it out. Um, so, um, the first rule is not all non-zero numbers are significant. So if you have any number between one and nine, including one and nine, um, those are going to be significant. The rules really don't have anything to do. You don't have the rules because of the non-zero numbers. The rules are mainly for the zeros. How do you determine whether a zero is significant or not? Because the non-zero numbers are always significant. So there's never a question, but it's, it's the zeros that we have a problem with. It's the zeros that cause some trouble and that's what you need to figure out. Um, so for uh, rule, uh, rule number two, uh, it says zeros between non-zero numbers are always significant. So if you have a zero that's captured by or falls between to non-zero numbers, then that zero are, is always significant. So for example, if you have a number like uh, 100, uh, 1,003 inches, right? So the zeros that are captured between one and three here, are going to be significant because they fall between two non-zero numbers, right? And it does not matter how many zeros you have. You can have one zero, two zeros, you can have a hundred zeros. Any, any zeros that are fall between, as long as they fall between two non-zero numbers or are sandwiched between or captured by uh, two non-zero numbers at the end, then any zeros that fall in between those two non-zero numbers are going to be automatically significant. So <clears throat> the number of sig figs here are, is uh, four because I have two non-zero numbers, one and three, and the two zeros fall between those two non-zero numbers. So all, all of these zeros are significant. So we have four significant figures for that example. The third rule is that leading zeros are never significant. What is a leading zero? A leading zero is the, any zeros that are at the beginning of your number. Okay, so they are 
<clears throat> never, never significant. So uh, an example of this would be, uh, you know, something like 0 0.005206. Uh, grams. So here, uh, these are your leading zeros. They are at the front of your number. And what we mean by the front of your number is um, they're in front of the very first non-zero digit in your number. So if you read the number this way, we're reading the number this in this direction. So the five is at the beginning. And so we read this way. So this is at the beginning. This is in the front of your number. So we call these leading zeros. So any zeros that are in the front are going to be uh, insignificant. They're never significant. So you never have to worry about these. These are just placeholders. So without those zeros, I, I do not know what the places of these things are. So the five, what is that? Is that 5,000? Is that, you know, 500? What, what is it, right? And so I'm not sure. So the zeros, without the zeros, I might think that that five is a uh, 5,000. Um, so the zeros tell me what the place value of the number is. So that, this tells me that with these two zeros here, then that, that five is in the thousands place, right? Because this is the tenths, the hundredths, the thousand, uh, thousands place, okay? So that's, what the, that's why we have the zeros, but they're not significant, right? Okay, so, um, so that applies to any, any zeros that fall in the front, never significant. So you never count those as significant figures, okay? Uh, so this number here, uh, we would ignore these zeros. Uh, the five, the two, the six are non-zero, so those are significant. This zero falls between the two and the six, so that is significant. So this would be four significant figures, okay? Not, not seven significant figures, just four. Not six, not five, not seven, four. Okay, so um, so that takes care of that. Now the last one, now the, again, a lot of times you'll see this broken down into two separate rules. Uh, I put it together because I think it makes it easier to remember. Um, uh, if you try to break it up in the details, the, the students can get confused. So, um, so number four is trailing zeros are only significant if there is a decimal, okay? And uh, I don't think I don't think a lot of people put it that way. A lot of times they'll say um, if it's to the right of the decimal or to the left of the decimal, um, things like that. Is it significant if it's to the right or to the left or or whatever? Or um, I just simplify it to say if there is a decimal. Um, because I think that covers everything. So, for example, um, let's say I have five. Uh, let's say I have five thousand. Another example would be if I have five thousand with a decimal, or what if I have five thousand uh, like this, right? <clears throat> Or what if I have, you know, 2,032.0056, right? <clears throat> so something like this. So, um, so let's take this number here. So I have 5,000. There is no decimal point. So according to this, trailing zeros, and, and let me explain what trailing zeros are. Trailing zeros are zeros that come at the very end of your number. So trailing zeros um, are the opposite of your leading zeros. So uh, you find the last non-zero digit in your number, and whatever, whatever zeros follow that, if you have zeros, those would be considered your trailing zeros, the zeros at the end. So here's my last 
and only non-zero digit. So these zeros here are my trailing zeros. So trailing zeros are only significant if there's a decimal. Okay. So here I don't have a decimal. So these are not significant. So this would be one significant figure. Now, some textbooks, they would say it's ambiguous. You don't know. So you can't say for sure. Maybe it's, maybe it's one. Maybe it's two. Maybe this zero is significant, but these are not. Maybe, uh, maybe these two are not, or maybe all. So it's, 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 not, it's not clear um, what, is it, what is it. But <clears throat> some textbooks also say that if there is no decimal point, then you assume that these are not significant. So that's what this is going by. So this is either ambiguous or there's only one significant figure. Okay. So, but if you do have a decimal, and some textbooks do this as well, if you have a, a decimal there, then these are significant. So those zeros become significant if you have a decimal. And so in this case, you have one significant figure. In this case, you have four significant figures, okay? <clears throat> um, same thing with this one. It doesn't, and this is why I say if there's a decimal, it doesn't matter if, there, if the decimal, if the zeros are to the right or to the left. If you have a decimal, it's gonna be significant, right? So here I have a decimal, these zeros and these zeros are all significant because I have a decimal in my number. So this would be, one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. And the same thing for this one. Notice that here, these are not trailing zeros. I just kind of threw this in here as, as, a, as an example to talk about the zeros. The zeros follow the decimal, so they're to the right. Um, but again, um, you don't really need to worry about left or right. You could just worry about whether there's a decimal or not. Um, also, we have a decimal. Also, these two zeros fall between two non-zero numbers. So because they follow, follow, they fall between two non-zero numbers, they are going to be significant. Okay. Um, so this is a good um, introduction to the rules. Um, one thing I do want to go over quickly is uh, scientific notation a little bit. Now, the great thing about scientific notation is that it takes away the guesswork about what, how, whether or not your zeros are significant. So for example, so for this one, if it's ambiguous, you really don't know if it's significant, then if you, um, if you put this into scientific notation, then the sci every digit that's shown in scientific notation is automatically uh, significant because scientific notation puts the, the, the value so that you can see which digits are, sign, uh, are significant. So if all of these zeros are significant, then if I put this in scientific notation, I move this over one, two, three, and then it becomes 5.000 and then times 10 to the third power. Right. So now that I have it in scientific notation, the fact that the zeros are shown here, I automatically know that it is significant. Also, look, I have the decimal there. So if there's a decimal, then trailing zeros are significant. So that's another way. But you can always, if you have any number, 5.20 times 10 to the second, again, scientific notation presents all your digits as significant. So if it's there in scientific notation, then you count all the digits, whether they're zeros or not. You count them because it's in scientific notation and scientific notation presents all the digits there as significant. So it takes away the ambiguity. So when in doubt, um, if you want to express um, your number in the right number of significant figures, write it in scientific notation with the proper number of significant figures. So I hope that was helpful and uh, good luck and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me.